confined to Cathay Pacific. I think it's, it's for every airline that, you know, opportunities are ever growing from Nepal market. And as to sum up some of the challenges that we as an operating airline have is uh, very high uh, ground handling charges at the airport and the infrastructure that we have. Hello and welcome to nepaltraveler.com. Today we are back with our next episode of Nepal Travel Trade Talk. And today we are joined by a lady who's flying high, who's unfurling Nepal's banner and doing us proud. We have with us today Junu Maleku, who is the country lead of Cathay Pacific in Nepal. Welcome to our show, Junu. Thank you, Terence. Thank you for having me here. And it's a great pleasure for me to you know, have this chat with you today. Thank you so much. You, know, you are one of the ladies who represent an international airline who who's the lead in Nepal. How has this journey been in tourism in the airline industry? Would you like to share a little bit with us? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, the, the journey that I have, um, I have been through uh, in, in these 19 years now, uh, has been uh, very, very enriching for me. It's been amazing and um, uh, full of learning for me. The, I, I still remember the day when I started in 2005. Um, that was the day and today is the day where, you know, I can, when I turn back, um, I think uh, I feel very proud. I feel very happy uh, to what I achieved to this date. And uh, it's not less than any any kind of a story for me. It's very interesting. Yeah. So um, just to give you the background of how I started and you know my uh, career journey is, um, I started as a assistant to uh, assistant to uh, managing director of one of the reputed travel agency, which uh, which was um, General Sales Agency for Qatar Airways then. And then my journey started from there and um, I slowly started, um, you know, uh, growing as a, uh, um, so, okay. So um, I, I started my journey from Qatar Airways and then, you know, my, uh, my journey um, in, in sales started from there itself. And then I grew myself, um, I switched my uh, role to Etihad Airways then, and then, uh, and then to Cathay Pacific, then it was called Dragon Air. So then, um, yeah, and in this journey, you know, the learning that I have done and growth that I have seen in myself in many folds, that is simply amazing. And the people that I have met during these years and, um, you know, people I have worked with and I have interacted with, when I look back, it's, it's simply amazing for me. As the country lead of uh, Cathay Pacific, what do you see as some of the major challenges that airlines and Cathay face working in Nepal? Uh, you know, Terence, uh, what I feel is um, um, challenges like uh, makes life very interesting because without any challenges, um, you can't find opportunities because, you know, when there is challenge, you, you will tend to think different and act different to others. You know, like then, then for Cathay Pacific, um, I see more of opportunity uh, in Nepal market than challenges. Um, why do I say this? Because uh, the people nowadays, like they are, the, the trend uh, is, is ever changing um, in terms of travel. They have started traveling to the world, exploring the world, you know, meeting new people. And this trend has only served an opportunity for airlines like us. And also, you know, the travel trend has changed a lot as compared to previous years. And uh, in terms of every segment, uh, name it like uh, visiting friends and families or uh, students, um, uh, business, and um, even, even uh, 
skilled laborers, and also now there's a new term called pleasure, which is business yes. plus leisure, and this is a new concept, and this is uh, growing as ever. And it's not even confined to Cathay Pacific. I think it's it's for every airline that you know opportunities are ever growing from Nepal market and. As to sum up some of the challenges that we as an operating airline have is um, um, the uh, very high uh, ground handling charges at the airport and the infrastructure that we have, which needs to be improved a lot to maintain the international standards and also um, uh, finding right talent and good talent in the industry is one of the major constraints that we are facing as of now. Um, and retention of the employee is another challenge for uh, for us, you know. But fortunately, um, Cathay is uh, being blessed with with a good team, with a uh, with a very bond team. Uh, sorry, team build, uh, team bonding, and um, we have our team members who are working in the company uh, since over a decade now. So we we are being blessed in that sense. When you look at, uh, you mentioned about the outbound from Nepal. People are traveling, people are going uh, for holidays, for business and holidays. How do you see this market and what kind of role is Cathay playing or Cathay and Hong Kong as a destination? Uh, what is happening on that front? Yeah, our major focus is to connect people from Nepal um, as a gateway in Hong Kong to the world. Um, currently, we uh, we operate four flights in a week, and um, to Hong Kong and beyond. Beyond that, um, we operate to about seventy five cities across thirty countries, and we also have code share partners where we add one hundred and sixty more destination for our travelers to explore and travel. And um, and from uh, from April, we are uh, we are planning to add one more uh, frequency which makes us five flights in a week. So, um, and um, uh, when I talk about 2023, when we just recently started, we, um, as per the statistic, we, uh, we have carried about 50,000 people inbound and outbound. So that's the contribution that Cathay is, um, Cathay is doing for, for this travel industry. When you talk about outbound, and we recently, you hosted us yes. on a fan trip, which we thoroughly enjoyed. When you talk about the outbound, what else is there in terms of uh, Cathay's association with uh, Hong Kong tourism and, and beyond? Is that, would you like to share a little bit about that, where Nepalese can gain from that? Yeah. <clears throat> um, you know, Hong Kong is one of the uh, attractive destinations for Nepalese and for the rest of the world, I would say. And Hong Kong is, is trying to promote um, itself as a, as a leisure destination. And so we are doing the are doing a lot of promotions in in Nepal market as well and um, and one of the uh, one of the um, initiative that we have done was we um, we organized a fan trip for uh, our trade partners as well as some media mm -hmm. people and we gave them I think the best experience that that they could ever have uh, during this trip so that they can you know um, they can pass down the same experience to uh, to their uh, uh, to their passengers and to their valued customers as well. And we have also tied up with the Hong Kong Tourism Board um, from Hong Kong side. Unfortunately, we do not have Hong Kong Tourism Board presence in Nepal, but uh, we are taking advantage of the, uh, you know, uh, the relation that uh, Hong Kong has uh, with Hong Kong Tourism Board and the CAFE has with Hong Kong Tourism Board. And we, we, are, uh, we are participating in various kinds of activities and initiatives to uh, promote Hong Kong as a leisure destination. And it's not only Hong Kong as a leisure destination, we are also trying to promote um, GBA, which is a Greater Bay Area, uh, as an extended home market. Um, and we, uh, we have, um, you know, um, we have been promoting uh, GBA areas, which is Shenzhen cities in China, uh, via train, bus, uh, ferry, there are a lot of a lot of way to connect from Hong Kong to GBA, and that's what we are we are currently promoting. On the reverse side, on the other side of the coin, how is Hong Kong helping to get tourists into Nepal, especially because you are the hub for even large part of China? So, uh, what would you like to comment on in terms of getting more Chinese tourists, Hong Kong people into Nepal as tourists? 
Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, currently, um, like I mentioned, in 2023, we uh, we have carried quite a lot of uh, uh, Taiwan, uh, the, the tourists from Taiwan, and we are trying to get some tourists from Hong Kong as well, particularly uh, the pilgrimage tours um, to Lumbini uh, via Kathmandu, obviously. And um, yeah, we are uh, we are doing a lot of uh, promotions and initiatives, even to um, you know, Hong Kong is a small country, um, but Hong Kong as a hub, we are trying to get more tourists from China, as you mentioned, and Australia, U.S., Almost. Canada. Japan is one of our top um, top market Northeast where we can expect uh, tourists. Yeah, so that's uh, there are a lot of things going on behind the scene to get the tourists from all these countries to Nepal. On a, on the other side of it, uh, how is your marketing in terms of with tourism board and Hong Kong tourism? Is there some kind of synergy out so that we can bring in more passengers as well as carry out more passengers? Um, yeah, there has been some uh, trade fairs where um, where Nepalese um, Nepalese tour associations and uh, tour agency they have participated in China. Uh, I have not seen in Hong Kong, but there are lots uh, going on in China as of now. As a woman in tourism, how do you see your journey and what would you like to share with other women? Or would you want to encourage more women to enter into tourism? Absolutely. I think, um, you know, tourism industry is, is absolutely a wonderful industry to work where you can explore your potential and you can flourish and you can, you know, reach to the goals um, as you may have. And um, as you mentioned, like being a woman, um, I think um, I've been fortunate enough to be working with uh, with a company where there is no bias in any ways. And, you know, I get equal opportunity as um, as everyone gets. And um, I think uh, there's no there's no way where, uh, you know, I have felt that I have uh, taken a step back or, you know, I've not given an opportunity to uh, explore my potential or explore my leadership. So, um, yeah, I think uh, in, in that sense, um, I think I'm very, very uh, lucky and uh, fortunate to have worked with a company where, um, you know, they, they, they treat everyone equally. And I think um, uh, that's why I think that's, that, that's the confidence that they have given me to um, lead an uh, uh, international airline and work with, uh, with my other counterparts. And in, in this industry in Nepal, especially where it is kind of male dominated, I would so. I would uh, say. Um, but I think uh, I don't I don't think in, in any ways that I'm less capable or, you know, less less competent than any of my counterparts. You did mention a little earlier about manpower and retaining uh, talent and employees. What would be your message to young Nepalese who are all leaving the country, especially to young women? Uh, what kind of tips would you give them to join into the hospitality or aviation airline industry? Um, you know, like I just mentioned, it's it's a it's an industry with full of potential if you can explore the potential. And um, you know, I've been associated with one of the uh, one of the women-led uh, uh, association, which is called Tourism Sisterhood Association Nepal. And I'm the vice president currently there. And what we do there is we believe in um, a couple of things like, you know, purpose, uh, our objective is purpose and uh, placement and uh, passion, you know, where we uh, we get together all the uh, we bring together all the uh, all the women who are in tourism and we give them uh uh, we give them trainings and we give them the platform to interact with uh, with the people so that they can get the right uh, right place to work and uh, we also empower them uh, by giving them uh, soft skills also uh, trainings and leadership trainings so so that you know they can they can at least step up and take some leadership position in in the in the travel industry and as a final so, question what would you say is unique about Cathay Pacific? Why would you tell Nepalese who are traveling or others, why use uh, Cathay Pacific as, as the carrier? You know, like um, um, Hong Kong as a hub itself is a unique, um, 
uh, unique experience they could uh, um, they could feel i would say and um, also the service that we provide on ground uh, on ground in every touch point that customer uh, gets into i think they will they will get the standard of service that we provide to them and also that uh, the seamless connection that we provide from our hub hong kong and uh, also the um, you know um, onboard experience our seat our uh, in flight um, service and also entertainment food cuisine everything i think is quite unique to uh, what other competition have and also uh, from uh, second uh, second half of 2024 we are introducing a unique experience for our business class passenger uh, with uh, with aria suites which is coming up and we all are very much excited to have that launched sometime in in the second half of um, 2024 and before we conclude i must also mention that we had the opportunity to fly business class uh, they hosted us and it was an amazing experience especially the cuisine also that that is served on on board so thank you so much junu for joining us today and sharing your ideas with us thank you so much thank you so much for having me